Hello friends, the topic of today's discussion is diastereoselectivity in aldol condensation. You must be knowing about aldol condensation. In aldol condensation, depending upon the structure of the reactants, there may be generation of no chiral center or one chiral center or two chiral centers. In the first two cases, there is no question of diastereoselectivity, but in the third case, two diastereomers are formed in unequal proportion. Thus, there is diastereoselectivity in the formation of one diastereomer over the other. Let's have a ketone with alpha hydrogen. When it is treated with base like LDA, it produces two enolates in unequal proportion depending upon the nature of R1 and R2. The enolate in which R2 is cis to the oxide and is called cis enolate and the other having R2 trans to the oxide and is called trans enolate. Cis enolate reacts with aldehyde to produce preferentially enantiomeric mixture of aldols having R2 and OH syn to each other called synaldol and trans enolate reacts with aldehyde to produce preferentially enantiomeric mixture of aldols having R2 and OH NT to each other called anti-aldol. Thus, which enolate is formed as the major one is the main factor controlling the diastereoselectivity of the aldol condensation. Now we will learn how cis enolate preferentially gives syn aldol while trans enolate gives preferentially anti aldol. Let's first see how cis enolate gives preferentially syn aldol. We can draw the cis enolate like this. There are two ways in which the aldehyde can orient. In one orientation, it is so oriented that H is axial and in other, R3 is axial. Now, nucleophilic addition like this will generate six-membered chair-like transition state A and B. Transition state A with equatorial R3 is more stable while transition state B with axial R3 is less stable because of a stronger 1,3 diaxial interaction between R1 and R3. So the reaction proceeds mainly through the transition state A. A then collapse into the lithium salt of syn aldol. If we redraw it will look like this. After acidic workup it will give corresponding syn aldol. Now let's see how trans enolate preferentially gives anti aldol. We can draw the trans enolate like this. There are two ways in which aldehyde can orient. In one orientation, it is so oriented that H is axial, and in other, R3 is axial. Now, nucleophilic addition like this will generate six member chair like transition state A and B. Transition state A with equatorial R3 is more stable while transition state B with axial R3 is less stable because of a stronger 1,3 diaxial interaction between R1 and R3. So the reaction will proceed mainly through transition state A a then collapse into lithium salt of anti aldol which can be redrawn like this. After acidic workup, it will give corresponding anti aldol products. Factors governing the geometry of enolates. Geometry of lithium enolates is governed by the size of R group which is not enolized. For example, if we treat this ketone with LDA, it will give a mixture of cis and trans enolate. 
the percentage of cis and trans inulates varies with the size of r bigger the r higher will be the percentage of cis inulate in this case if r is equal to ethyl cis and trans inulates are 30 and 70 percent respectively but if r is equal to t butyl cis inulate is 98 percent while trans is only 2 percent cyclic ketones in the case of cyclic ketones because of geometrical constraint only trans inulate is formed for example if we treat cyclopentenone with LDA only trans inulate is formed boron inulates in the case of boron inulates the geometry of inulate mainly depends on the size of substituents on the boron atom bigger substituents favor trans inulate while smaller substituents favor cis inulate for example ethyl phenyl ketone when treated with chloro disyclohexyl borane in the presence of triethylamine produces trans inulate because of two bulky cyclohexyl groups while the same ketone when treated with 9 bbn triflet in the presence of triethylamine produces cis inulate here the boron is the part of bicyclic structure the bicyclic part may look large but as far as the rest of the molecule is concerned it's tied back behind the boron and the methyl group can easily lie cis to oxygen now let's do some exercise suppose we have to predict the product for the reaction of ethyl butyl ketone with benzaldehyde in the presence of LDA as a base let's go step by step ethyl butyl ketone in the presence of LDA produces cis inulate because of bulky T butyl group we have just discussed that cis inulate after reaction with aldehyde gives syn aldol so this inulate after reaction with benzaldehyde will give racemic mixture of lithium salt of syn aldol which after acidic workup will produce a racemic mixture of syn aldols let's have another example in which we have to predict the structure of the product for the reaction of cyclopentenone with benzaldehyde in the presence of LDA cyclopentenone in the presence of LDA produces inulate which exists only in trans configuration we know that trans inulate after reaction with aldehyde gives anti aldol so this trans inulate after reaction with benzaldehyde will give racemic mixture of lithium salt of anti aldol which after acidic workup produces racemic mixture of anti aldols that's all in this video please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon if you like this video thank you very much